Hello, Ron Mithril here once again, getting back to Mega Man Super Fighting Robot. Starting here on the title screen because I did want to show that I did get a fifth completion star for Wily Stage 5, despite the fact that there wasn't a sound effect to let me know that I got this star. I think it might just be because that fight ends in an unusual way. Proto Man isn't actually defeated, he just goes down to 1 HP, and then it immediately goes into story cutscene type stuff, so that might interfere with it a little bit. Nothing major, I just wanted to point out that I did get that star. For now, though, it's time for the final Wily stage, so let's do this! Oh, well, there it is. Well, that was easy enough. Short as the stage is, probably no reason to bother speeding things up, so we'll just get right into the fight here. The first phase overall is pretty simple. Just make sure you shoot the mouth cannon before it can start firing. That aside, this fight is very pattern-based. You have plenty of opportunities to counter-attack. So this phase overall is pretty easy. Now for phase two. This is where things start getting a little bit trickier. Phase two is still pretty pattern-based, but it's a lot easier to get tripped up by things. Yeah, I kind of dropped the pattern there. Oddly enough, it is usually a smaller shots that'll get me. Fireball can also be a bit of a pain. But there we go, time for the third phase. The Wily Capsule. The Sonic Slicer attack is the one that gives me the most trouble, because I always feel like I have more room to dodge it than I really do. The electric tack is kind of annoying just for how long it stays on screen. And there we go! So at this point, we've pretty much seen the ending of the game, so we're just going to go through this. I'm probably going to cut it here and come back once we get to parts of the end credits where things have changed, because like I said, some of the question marks are going to be filled in, and we're going to have any unlocked messages. But yeah, we've been through all this.
Long Bulwark is long. Okay, yeah, I can't keep that up. But, yeah, just to show this glitch is consistent. Okay, so yeah, we have Squaresoft in the credits now, thanks to the Red Mage. Yep, they're credited all over the place, music, sound effects, all that good stuff. Congratulations, you beat hard mode. Base is now waiting to challenge you in battle. Yeah, Zapman's ending screen kind of confirmed that we were going to get base at some point. For chivalry, get ready for a legendary crossover duel. Really? <laughs> okay, that is awesome. Never fear, Simon Belmond is here. Challenge him in special mode. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Congratulations, you've beaten hard mode, but are you insane enough to try the most challenging mode yet? Well, I think I'm gonna have to be, because I think that's how I unlock the final hidden boss. And so, that's the end. So, time for a quick refreshing pause, then we'll come back to start looking at the bonus options. Alright, so coming back to the title screen, all our completion stars are gold now. I will admit I do kind of miss the colorful nature that they had before, but still, nice and shiny. So let's see what we have here. C137 mode. Plays everyone's favorite alcoholic scientist. Okay. I have a feeling a reference is being made here that I simply do not understand. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and start demoing these options. So, we'll start with 1 HP mode. So we'll just go into a stage right from the start. The trick is I'm going to have to survive long enough to demonstrate the true nature of this option. As you can see, I have indeed started with 1 HP. Welcome to my world, any hit is deadly. But the trick is, energy pickups do still work, so you don't stay limited to just 1 HP, you just start with 1 HP. A lot of people were asking if I came around to do perfect runs of this game, would I be using 1 HP mode? For this reason, probably not, but also the reason that, you know, when I fail a perfect run, sometimes I like to do silly things after I'm just sitting there taking in the fact that I got hit for a moment. Things like the spring break throw self into spikes. Just constant pew 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 of dying every time I got hit, it would probably get kind of stale. However, this is an interesting play on that. Nice kind of challenge mode. Okay, so our next option, we have Beta View. May as well take the fitting stage for this one. <laughs> wow. Even in the select screen, that's interesting.
So yeah, I'm not seeing like collision detection boxes on enemies or projectiles or anything. Mainly it seems to be the terrain. Still gives things a pretty interesting look. Oh, and we have these boxes to mark that this is the exit. That's pretty interesting. Looks kind of trippy. I approve. I know it specifically mentioned spikes as well, so I kind of want to find some. I know there are some in this stage. Tanking hits for demonstration purposes. Okay, yeah, they seem to have angry red boxes on them. Yay! So next up we have Levitation. This one should be interesting. So yes, as long as you hold down the A button, you just gently float back down. Interesting, that. Slowly, gently. Kind of nice. I can tell I am still speeding up a little bit as I fall, it's just a lot slower. So this gives you a lot more maneuverability in the air, and it also probably would have made that one disc in Wily Stage 5 a lot easier to get. Next up, we have Doot Doot. A lot of people were really waiting for this one. So, let's see what this does. A bicorn, okay. <laughs> I don't know who this Mr. Skeletal was that was being thanked, but uh, okay then. <laughs> Does it do anything to charge shots? Nope, those are normal. <laughs> okay, that's pretty great. Next up we have Skip to Boss, which is pretty much what it says on the tin, I would imagine. Yep, who needs a stage, we just appear right in the boss corridor. So this is pretty much if you just want the entire game to be a boss rush, I guess. That or if you just want a really fast clear time for reasons. That's right, Coleman. I've learned you. So next we have Max Damage. Another one that's pretty easy to see the effects of it. 
just for fun. down here. Revenge is fun! But of course you only get one star for using this option. You can't just use it to cheese your star ratings. So that's fair enough. Our next option is hyperspeed. This one worries me. Okay, yeah, that's a significant speed boost. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's pretty crazy. I have to wonder if there's any kind of glitching that can be caused with this. I have been told that that's actually what's going on with Quick Man, is that he moves so fast that he actually gets stuck in the wall sometimes. And that's actually what leads to a lot of his randomness. So yeah, it is still controllable, but it is definitely an appreciable speed boost. That's kind of hilarious. Doesn't seem to have any effect, though, on moving on ladders. It's purely walking and sliding. That's kind of amazing. Alright, so our next option, we have Low Gravity. I'm gonna look in my save files here, because I really want to see what this is gonna do in a particular stage. I think it would be this one? Can't skip the map screen, though. But I really want to see what this is gonna do here. Okay, so I definitely have floaty gravity going on. Okay, it just completely obviates this gimmick. It acts like I'm at half gravity the whole time, no matter which of those I pass by. So that's kind of interesting. I was really curious what that was going to do. Now we know. Science has been conducted. Delightful floaty science. Next up, it's time for Proto Armor. This one seems pretty straightforward, but there is something specific I do want to test with it. Okay, so the basic idea here is anything that hits me is only going to do one damage. And that was generous. So yeah, no matter what hits me, only one damage. But now what I'm curious about. That counts for spikes, too. Okay. That's interesting. That was very specifically what I wanted to see about with this option. So everything is only one damage. Except, I would imagine, bottomless pits. That's probably death. But hey, no one can tell me I didn't test. Yep. And so that leaves us with the final bonus option, C-137 mode. I really have no idea what to expect with this. Okay.
doesn't seem to change anything other than visuals. I think I do recognize him, though. I think it's something from Adult Swim. I forget the name of the show, but I know I've seen this guy before. So yeah, it does slightly change what the shots look like. Still a dog. So, yeah, there is that. But now I am kind of curious about something, so back in a moment. Alright, so while going through here, a couple of things I did notice in the pause screen. Instead of the Mega Buster, he has the R gun. Rick's trusty ray gun. Hold down the B button to charge up a larger blast and release the button to fire. Rick, that's his name. Rick and Morty, that was the name of the show. Okay. Alright. Also, instead of the extra life icon that Mega Man has, he has this little box thing. I don't know if that's like a med kit or something. It might be something that's actually unique to Rick and Morty, the actual show. I've never actually watched it, so I don't really know. But anyway, I want to see just how much attention to detail there is. So, let's beat Axeman. Yeah, I don't know what controls how many times he jumps. I lost track of the pattern. But there we go. Yeah, Axeman is still going to take some practice, but at least I understand when he uses which weapon. That much I get now. He does get a custom sprite. Okay, that's kind of awesome. That was all I really wanted to check there. And so with that, we've demonstrated all the bonus options. So, final thoughts on hunts for the bonus discs. Overall, it was a really fun thing to do. Kind of add some nice replayability, and the bonus options are all really fun. I will say the hunt for the CDs did feel a little unbalanced. Only four hidden amongst the eight Robot Master stages, yet there was one in every single Fortress stage. So that felt a little oddly unbalanced to me. It didn't really bug me too much, but it did feel kind of, like I said, just kind of unbalanced. But overall, still a really fun system. I enjoyed looking for the discs. I had a lot of fun with this. Demonstrating all of this did take a little longer, though, than I anticipated, so the next video, that's where we're going to show the three new bosses that we unlocked, and I'm also going to experiment with weaknesses to find out what the weaknesses of the Fortress bosses are. So with that, thank you very much for watching, I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well.